The Covenant Family, Facebook family, thank you guys for tuning in to our midweek service and Bible study. And uh, uh, so good to have you guys once again. We had a good word that we're going to study on tonight. And uh, I believe it's going to bless you. Pastor Cheryl, how you doing this evening? I am doing great. Amen. 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 We are, you know, I'm excited about this weekend coming up because this is... Um, Resurrection Celebration Weekend. We don't call it Easter. We call it Resurrection because that's what it's all about. And, you know, someday I'll get into it and I'll talk to you about uh, where Easter came from. But uh, it's it's Resurrection. And that's what we're going to be celebrating on this e uh, this uh, Sunday coming up, the Resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. This coming Friday is Good Friday. Uh, the Lord was crucified. He was buried. And on the third day, he was raised from the dead, resurrected. And we're going to celebrate that. And this is what it's all about. Because if it were not for the resurrection of Jesus, we would all still be in our sins. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Pastor Cheryl, how you doing? You got anything you want to share with us before I read the scripture? Nah. All right, then. I'm, all right, I'll just go ahead and read our scripture for us then. And then I'll let you share what uh, you've been studying. How about that? Okay. All right. Uh, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowds you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. Pastor Cheryl, what you got on your heart tonight? What what you going, uh, what you've been studying? Well, I've been studying the resurrection. All right, all right, all right. That's an exciting subject. It is. Very powerful. It because is. that's what, you know, Christianity, that's the foundation of mm -hmm. Christianity, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. For those of you watching, like and share on tonight. Invite people to come in uh, for the Bible study. But, you know, I, uh, I, was, I was studying it because... You know, I had saw something, and it just piqued my curiosity. Mm -hmm. So I went to um, St. John chapter number 20. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Mary Magdalene was something else. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She followed Jesus yeah. to the end. Yes. Yes. And and in the new beginning. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a quite interesting study. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, Mary Magdalene, you know, the reason why and Mag Magdalene is not a last name. I know, Mary of Magdalene. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying that yeah. for those out there who, who don't know that Magdalene is not a last name, but she was from a, a place called Magdala. And everybody from Magdala were, were called Magdaleans, just like we're from Houston. Mm -hmm. We're called Houstonians. Yes. And uh, so the Catholic Church, it was, gave her a bad rap. Oh, they gave her a bad rap. Very bad. Yeah. And uh, But when you read about her, you find that uh, Mary Magdalene, uh, Jesus cast seven, seven devils out of her. demons. Mm -hmm. Just having one is enough. Yes, it is. But seven, oh my God, yeah. I just can't even imagine. Yeah. And But that's probably why she had 
been delivered from so much. Yeah. Maybe that's why she followed him Absolutely. so much. Absolutely. You would think that, you know, when a person has been delivered the way she had been delivered, oh, yeah. that, you know, it wouldn't be a problem for them to follow the Lord the way she did. No. And not only that, but Mary Magdalene, she gave of her substance. She gave yeah. money, sold money into Jesus's ministry. She was seeing a, several other ladies. She wasn't. <coughs> a, she wasn't a poor woman. Right. So she had. She was a woman of means. Yes. And um, but once she got delivered, she was completely sold out to Jesus. Absolutely. Completely. Absolutely. Sold out. Yeah, you know, you have people who probably say, well, yeah, she had my, all that money she made from prostitutes. No, the Bible was, never no, taught no. where she was a prostitute. No, no. and mm -hmm. it, it grieves me and it irritates me mm -hmm. to the end to see how men, when they preach about her, mm -hmm. they say that she was a prostitute. Scripture never says yeah. that she was a, she was a prostitute. And it never says what spirits. Yeah. Exactly. He delivered her. And, and by the way, there's no demon of prostitution. <laughs> <laughs> well, sex. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, like, uh, you, you prostitute, you do get paid. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So exactly. It's very interesting. Mm hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, all right, Pastor Cheryl, we're going to get ready to get into this word on tonight. How about that? Let's get into it. All right, then. Let's go uh, in your Bibles. If you have your Bibles with you, we're going to go over to the book of Colossians chapter number two, and we're going to read our foundational uh, scriptures from this second chapter, Colossians chapter two, verse one through verse three, and then down on at verse number nine. And this is the apostle Paul writing to the church of Colossae. He says, uh, for I will, excuse me, for I won't you to know what a great conflict I have for you and those in Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love and attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And then down in verse number nine, it says, for in him, talking about in Christ, mm -hmm. all the fullness of the Godhead uh, dwells, rather, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead. So in Christ, in Christ Jesus, all of the fullness of the Godhead dwells. Now, we said the word Godhead, Theotes in the Greek, it means divinity, supreme divinity. It means father, it's talking about the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit. It is a word used with reference to God when one speaks of God's divine nature or essence or the three persons of the Trinity. And once again, I want to say this again, there are three persons in the Trinity, the father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There's not one person. There are three persons in the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There are not three gods in the Godhead, but there's one God who manifests himself in three persons. He is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all right? Manifests himself in three persons, three distinct individuals, not one person but one God who manifests himself in three persons. Now, last week, with the Lord's help, we talked about the omnipresence of God, and we talked about how God is everywhere present at once. And uh, we shared how astronomers believe that there are 200 billion trillion stars in the universe, and that's a two with 23 zeros behind it. And so as vast as the universe is, we also talked about how God, uh, in his eminence, he transcends the universe. Uh, in other words, uh, God is above and beyond the universe. And not only is he transcendent of it, but we talked about his eminence, how God is yet near. 
He's above and beyond, and yet he is near. That lets us know that as far back in eternity as you go, and as far into eternity as you can go, God is already there. He doesn't have to go there. He's already there. He's already there. And not only is he already there, but he can. He is right here in this dining room with Pastor Cheryl and I. And wherever you are sitting or standing or driving along and watching this Bible study on tonight, God is right there with you as well because he is omnipresent. So we talked about the, the Father is omnipresent, the Son is omnipresent, and the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. All three are in every place at the same time. And then we talked about the omniscience of the Godhead, how God, the word omniscient, simply means omni, or omni means uh, all, and then science means knowledge. In other words, God is all-knowing. God knows all things, past, present, and future. And we talked about how um, when we say the Godhead is omniscient, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, each one of them are omniscient. They know all things. There's not anything that each of them do not know. Already. Already. Mm -hmm. They even know the possibilities of things that will occur, that may happen or will happen. So now we're going to go to the omnipotence of God. The omnipotence. Now remember the word omni means all, but then there's a second part of this word, Potent. That means power or powerful. So God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are all powerful. They are omnipotent. The omnipotence of God is that attribute by which he can bring to pass everything which he wills. Now, you got to understand that if God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all powerful, Get this now, that means that Satan and demonic spirits do not have power. <laughs> if God has, if he possesses all the power, then Satan and his demons don't possess any power. All right, so God's power admits of no bounds or limitations. God's declaration of his intention is the pledge of the thing intended being carried out. Theologically, omnipotence means that God can do whatever is possible to do or God can do what it, what it is not impossible to do. His power is unlimited and uninhabited by anything. You got to get that God possesses all power. Now, negatively, omnipotence does not mean that God cannot, it, it, yeah, it does not mean that God cannot contradict his nature. Let's look at some scripture on that. First of all, let's go over to Hebrews chapter number six. Let's go to Hebrews chapter number six. I hope y'all writing this down and um, because this is some good stuff. Write it down, Hebrews chapter 6 and verse um, uh, 16 and 17. Verse 16 and 17 of Hebrews chapter 6. It says, for men indeed swear by the greater and an oath for confirmation is for them an end of all dispute. Then it says in verse 17, thus God determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of the promise, the immutability of his, his counsel confirmed it by an oath. The word immutability means unchanging, the unchanging nature of God. God is immutable. Verse 18 says that by two immutable things in which, listen to this, it is impossible, impossible. for God to lie. We might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. So God is not going to go against his nature. It is impossible for him to lie. 
God, God is immutable. But, mm -hmm. but you remember when God was having a meeting with his council? With the council of heavens, yes. And he said, who will go and persuade Ahab? Ahab, yes. To go into battle. Yes. And, and the one, spirit came one before. One of the spirits him. came before him, and one of the spirits said mm -hmm. that I will send a lion spirit. Mm -hmm. No, he said I will go and be a lion spirit. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. But see, God, God Himself cannot lie. cannot lie. But the spirit that went uh, mm -hmm. from before God went and lied, or became a lion spirit to these prophets of Ahab. God cannot lie. It's impossible for him to lie. Let's look at uh, 2 Timothy uh, chapter number 2, verse number 13. It says, if we are faithful, look at this, he remains, oh, wait a minute, if we are faithless, I'm sorry, if we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. God is a faithful God. So he cannot be faithless. That's powerful. Go to uh, Titus chapter number one. Titus chapter number one. I'm going to read verse one and verse two. Paul, bond servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledgement of the truth, which according accords with godliness in hope of eternal life, which God who cannot lie. Cannot promise before time begins. So, all right, God, see, a lot of times we can say, we, we say God can do anything but fail. He can do anything but fail. God cannot lie. God cannot go against his own nature. He cannot go against who he is. He is immutable. He does not change. So God is not going, you know, be all true uh, for millions of years, for eternity, and then all of a sudden, he started, lying. he started lying. That's not God. That's Satan, who is the father of lies. Mm-hmm. All right, now, let's get into it. The omnipotence, the omnipotence of the Father. The term almighty means all-powerful. Almighty, the Hebrew word uh, Shaddai, El Shaddai, almighty, all right? And then it's the Greek word, uh, pantocrator, pantocrator, almighty. All right, now let's go to Genesis chapter number 17. Genesis chapter number 17 in the Old Testament, Old Testament book of Genesis. All right. And first we're going to go to uh, chapter 17 and verse number one. Then we go to chapter 28. Look at this chapter 17, verse number one of Genesis it says, then, uh, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am almighty God, walk before me and be blameless. I am almighty God, El Shaddai, all right? Go over to Genesis chapter number 28. I am almighty God. That's one of God's name. I'm almighty. I am the almighty God. I'm El Shaddai. All right. Now, Genesis 28, and I want you to look down at verse number 13. Genesis 28 and verse number 13 says, and behold, the Lord. Now, when you notice this word, Lord, is spelled with caps, all caps. It means Yahweh or Jehovah. Uh, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord. I am Jehovah God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, and the land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. All right. That's Genesis chapter eight and verse number 23. God, once again, he, he's, he says to him that I am Jehovah. I am Jehovah. All right. Now, and then he says, I am Jehovah God. Now I want you to go over to Exodus chapter number six. Exodus chapter number six. And I want you to look at verse number three. It says, I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as 
God Almighty, but by my name, Lord, caps, all right, Yahweh, I was not known to them, all right? I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty, Elohim El Shaddai, but by my name, Yahweh, I was not known to them. All right, now let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter number 6, New Testament. New Testament. 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. All right. Mm-hmm. And I want you to look at verse number 18. Ooh. Verse number 18. You know what? I'm going to start, Pastor Shirley, verse number 16. It says, and... What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of God, the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separated. Uh, be separate, says the Lord, do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord, or says Yahweh El Shaddai. All right, now this is this is powerful. I could, you know, unpack this and teach on this because, you know, this is so powerful to me. He says in that 17th verse, I want to say that again, come out. Therefore, come out from amongst them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean. And how many of y'all know that God intends for us to be separated from the world? We're not supposed to be a part of the world. We're supposed to be separate from the world. All right. Now, go to Revelation chapter number one, because we see that the Father is omnipotent. All right. Now we're going to see that the son, Revelation chapter number one. Woo, this is some good stuff, y'all. I hope y'all getting this. Mm -mm. Lord, have mercy. Revelation chapter number one, and I'm going to read verse. Uh, it's so good. I, I just got to read. I'm going to start at verse number four. It's just too good to just not. All right. It says, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and to, um, and to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. He loved us. And he washed us from our sins in his own blood. Verse six, and has made us kings and priests to his God and father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Verse seven, behold, he is coming with clouds and every eye will see him. Mm. Even they who pierced him and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him, even so, amen. Now he's talking himself, verse number eight. In your Bible, it should be written in red. It says, I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, uh-huh, who is and who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. Now, this is Jesus declaring that he is God. He says that I am the Almighty. Come on, somebody. Next time the Jehovah's Witnesses come knocking at your door, you show them that right there. You show them Revelation chapter number one. But make sure you read, you start reading at verse number four, because this is so good, y'all, all right? And uh, it's just too good. Uh, look at verse four again. 
John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace to him who is and was and is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne. Verse eight, I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord. Mm. Who is, verse four, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. Glory to God. All right, that's not all. That's not all. Go over to chapter number four of the Revelation. Chapter number four of the Revelation. Y'all have Jehovah's Witnesses coming to your house, knocking on your door. You oh, know, yeah. I hope you're writing these scriptures down. I saw some Saturday, Pastor Cheryl. You know, I stood right out there and I was just waiting on them. Y'all, <laughs> here I am over here. They didn't come though. Where were you? I was standing right in the front because we're in oh, Sweets and I. Oh, they know not to come. Yeah, to this they know house not to come this house no more. <laughs> Sweets and I had gone out to the mailbox, uh -huh. and uh, she kind of let them know this is her turf. Don't come over here. Yeah. And uh, but they weren't worried about little Sweets. Uh -uh. Revelation chapter number four. <clears throat> Look at verse number eight. It says the four living creatures, each having six wings, and were full of eyes around and within. And they do not rest day or night saying, holy, 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 Lord God almighty, who was, Revelation chapter one, verse number four and verse number eight, who is and who is to come. Come on, somebody. Come on. All right. Go to Matthew chapter number 28. Matthew chapter number two. And this is so good. And you know what? Like they used to say back in the day when they made cassette tapes, I'm going to buy this tape myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Matthew's gospel, chapter number 28, and go down to verse number 18. And Jesus came and spake to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven, in heaven. and on earth. All authority, he says, has been given unto him. So he possesses all authority. He is omnipotent. Now go to John chapter number 17. John chapter number, y'all write this down. This is Bible study, y'all. Write this down. <clears throat> this is good. Matter of fact, this is so good. It's good to me. John chapter number 17. I'm going to read verse one and verse number two. This is what is called the Lord's Prayer. In Matthew 6 and Luke chapter 6, that's called the model prayer. This is the actual Lord's prayer. It says, Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to the heavens and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also might, uh, your son may glorify you. Verse two, as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given to him. Oh man, this is so good. All right, Ephesians chapter number one. Let's go to Ephesians chapter number one. All right, I got to hurry, 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 hurry. All right, all right, let's see. Ephesians chapter one started, uh, I got verse 18, I'm going, but I want to go up to verse number uh, 15. Let's go to verse 15 and we're going to go down and read all the way down to verse number 22. It says, therefore, I also, after I heard uh, of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, make a mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now he's saying, I'm praying that the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he would give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Uh, verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, Woo. that you may know what is the hope of his calling? What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us 
who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who feels all in all. Now, this is so good, and there's a lot that can be unpacked in just those verses right there. You know, Paul was praying that, you know, God would open the eyes of their understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the eyes of their understanding that would be enlightened. Mm -hmm. And that they may know what is the hope of his calling. Uh, what are the riches of the, of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us? Now, another translation says the exceeding greatness of his power in us. Woo! Now, that's powerful right there, Pastor Gerald. The, the, the exceeding greatness of his power that is in us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ. Now look at this. You got to get this. Don't overlook this. Which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. It took a lot of power. It took exceeding great power to raise Jesus from the dead. Why? Because he who knew no sin was made to be sin for us. Every sin from the very first sin that had ever been committed to that present day that he uh, was crucified on the cross to this very day until the time he returns to this earth and fights the battle of Armageddon. Every sin, every known sin, every unknown sin was laid upon him at the cross of Calvary. He became sin for us. So it took exceeding great power to raise Jesus from the dead. And Paul said that exceeding great power is at work. You know. within us. Come on here, somebody. You need to say that. It's, there is exceeding great power at work in me. Woo, glory to God. I get excited about that. Every time I read that, Pastor Gerald, every time I study this and read it, I just get excited all over again because God has put this great power in us. And if this power is in us, why do we live defeated lives? We are not supposed to be living defeated lives. The devil is not supposed to be chasing us and defeating and destroying us. We're supposed to be chasing him and his demons. We got the exceeding great power of Jesus Christ that is in us, the power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead. This is what we're going to be celebrating on Sunday morning. That's why we ought to be shouting and we ought to be giving God some praise. And I, you know, I remember back in the church, you know, and, and a lot of preachers today, you know, they even got so sophisticated, you know, they don't like talking about it. And he died, didn't he die? Yeah, he died. And they put him in a borrowed tomb, but early Sunday morning, and that's when the saints would shout because they knew that had it not been for the resurrection of Jesus Christ, then we wouldn't be saved. Come on, somebody. That And that power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead, that power is at work within us. Come on here. Yeah. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Glory to God. I tell you. It, and it took a lot of power. It took a lot of it power. It took a lot of power. To yes, it raise did. Jesus. 
Yes, it did. Now, Jesus raised mm -hmm. people from the dead. Yes, he did. It took a lot of power. Yes, it did. But mm -hmm. Jesus didn't raise himself. He didn't raise himself. From the dead. That's right. The Father. The Father. Woo. Lord Jesus. The Father did that. And, and then watch this, though. Watch this. This is, see, this is what's so powerful, y'all. It says, you know, uh, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. So Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age that which is to come. He is far above the, oh, in chapter six of uh, Ephesians, um, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of this dark age, spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. The the kingdom of darkness, he is far above that. But there are dominions and powers and principalities in the kingdom of God. And Jesus is seated above all of that. Everything is subject to him. It's right here. It's under his feet. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body. The fullness of him who feels all in all. So if he is above all things, if he's above all principalities and powers and dominions, and we are in him, we are in him. Because when we got born again, we were baptized into Christ. If we are in him and he is above all and he is the head of the church and we are the church, then everything is under yeah. our feet, including Satan and his demonic spirits. They are under our feet. Come on, walk on him, y'all. If I was at church, I'd be walking on him right now. <laughs> Glory to God. Bishop, I was reading this article about this young man. He plays soccer over in Spain. Mm -hmm. And I don't know for people who doesn't who don't know mm -hmm. when you're over in Europe and you're playing soccer mm -hmm. they are very racist. Yep. They be throwing banana peels at those at the um, black, black players yep. calling them monkeys. Mm -hmm. Just every derogatory name you can yep. think of. Yes. And so he was saying how hard it was playing over there. Oh yeah. But he also said that he was he refuses to quit because if he quits, the racists win. Yeah. So somebody in the comments said that's just something that we have to go through because we are cursed. Oh my God. Oh my God. And I responded to them. I said, No, we are not cursed. Jeez. I said Jesus became a curse for us. Wow. But see, if you don't know, if you don't know, if you better. don't know your position, wow, in Christ, mm, mm, you mm. will, you will, all these people trying to teach something they don't know. Yes, if you don't know your position in Christ, you will let people put you in that condition. Absolutely, I, I wonder how many, how many, not not Europeans, but how many people of African descent, black people believe that they okay. are cursed. For them to say something like that, mm -hmm. I wonder how many African people or uh, people of African descent actually believe that we are a cursed people. My God, man. And if, if people actually believe that lie, then you are actually going to live out what you believe because you never rise above your level of belief. Yeah, and you're, yeah. but you're, but we, if you don't know your position in Christ, yeah, yeah, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you will believe the lie of Absolutely. the devil, and we know that Satan is the author. Of Absolutely, lies. Absolutely, man, God. All right, let me wrap it up here, Pastor Cheryl, and then I'm gonna turn it over you to, to you for prayer. If anyone has any prayer requests, let us know. Put it on the uh, screen there, and uh, we'll pray for you all on tonight. I want to deal with the omnipresence, I mean the omnipotence rather of the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians chapter number 12. The Holy Spirit is omnipotent. First Corinthians chapter number 12. And I'm going to start reading at verse number eight. 
it says, uh, let's go up to verse number four. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. Now, I want you to notice the spirit in verse four, the Lord in verse five, and the God in verse number six, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. All right. Verse number seven says, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit uh, of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit, to another, the word of knowledge through the same spirit, to another, faith by the same spirit, to another, gifts of healings by the same spirit, to another, the working of miracles um, by the same spirit, another prophecy, to another, discerning of spirits, to another, different kinds of tongues, uh, to another, the interpretation of tongues, but one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Distributing to each one individually as he wills. The Holy Spirit um, is omnipotent. He has the power to distribute gifts to people as he wills. All right. Now, finally, first, I mean, first chapter of Luke, Luke chapter number one, and then I'm going to read, go down and read verse number 35, because we're talking about the omnipotence of the Holy Spirit. And uh, it says, let me start at verse 32. Now let's go up to uh, uh, verse 30, and then we read down to verse number 35. Verse number 30 says, then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now, this is good. So we see that not only is the Father omnipotent, but the Son is omnipotent. Not only is the Son, Jesus Christ, omnipotent, but the Holy Spirit himself is omnipotent. So all three members of the Godhead are omnipotent. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, Pastor, we're going we're gonna to shut it down here on tonight and uh, we'll get back into this on next time, next week. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this on tonight. I hope that, you know, y'all got something out of this because I'm telling you, when the Jehovah's Witnesses come knocking at your door, you don't have to hide and, and ignore them. If you got, you know, uh, the ring doorbell and you see Watchtower magazines in their hands. You know that's Jehovah. Don't go to that. Don't answer that door. No, you don't have to do all that. You ain't got to hide from them. You don't have to hide from them. You got the word of God. You know who Jesus is. You know who the Holy Spirit is. You know who the Father is. You don't have to run and hide from anybody. You can prove it all in the word because we gave you some scripture on tonight. Amen? Amen. All right, Pastor Cheryl, do we have any special prayer requests that anybody... Yes. Uh, All right. Sister Gentry put up, pray for Maria Valencia. Mm -hmm. uh, she's one of our food pantry clients, mm. and she has invasive colon cancer. All right. All right. Amen. We will pray for her. We'll be praying. All right. And um, also, uh, is there anybody else? We want to also pray for uh, a, an awesome, awesome resurrection celebration on this coming Sunday morning. 
Okay. I'm praying that, you know, the Holy Ghost will be in the house. The anointing will be there and we'll have an awesome time, Pastor Cheryl, celebrating our, our Lord and our Savior. Yeah, Jesus was awesome. He was. He, was. he still is, to tell you the truth. Yeah, but when he... he Pray for Robert Glenn also. Mm -hmm. When he walked this earth, mm -hmm. he... um. Okay, Robert Glenn. Okay, when Jesus walked this earth, mm -hmm. he he included everybody in his ministry. Yeah, he there was nothing or nobody that he excluded. Exactly. And, and particularly, I'm talking about women. Right. You know, because mm -hmm. well, you were a woman back then. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. You were good for nothing but having babies, cleaning up, cooking. Yeah, yeah. And that was your extent. Yeah. But when Jesus came along, yeah. He he changed all that. Yes, he did. Got in trouble. Got in a lot of trouble for it too. But of course, he didn't care. Yeah. Who gonna check God? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Our good friend and brother Warren Sam is, is gonna be having surgery on Monday, so we want to pray for him oh. also. All right, have angio angioplasty. And uh, so we want to pray for him. Oh, okay. All right, Dr. Thank you, Morales', Chris. Dr. Morales um, mother, uh, Dr. Morales' dad, uh, both with cancer. Okay, all right. We, okay, we want to pray for uh, them also. All right? Okay. All right. So let's go to the Lord in prayer on tonight, Pastor Cheryl. And uh, let's believe God. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time, dear God, of sharing your word, of Bishop teaching us who your son is. Thank you, Jesus. That he is much as much as God as you are God. Yes, Lord. Lord. Yes. And we thank you for it. Thank God. you, Father. As a matter yes. of fact, you said in your word that was nothing created that yes. was created that he didn't create. Yes. So, God, we thank you for that. Thank God. you, Father. We lift up. Hallelujah. We lift up Marie Valencia with this invasive colon cancer. Yes. We lift up Robert Glenn to you. Yes. With cancer. I believe so. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, well, no, we don't know what Robert Glenn has, but yeah, we okay. lift him up to you, dear Father. Yes. We lift up Warren Sams with that has angel plastic surgery, yeah. dear yes. God. We thank you, God, that you're gonna mm -hmm. be with him. Yes. That you're gonna die at the hands of the surgeon, dear God. Yes. Just let everything come out well, Father. Yes, Lord. We lift up Doctor Morales's. Dad to yes. dear father. Cancer, yes. That he has cancer. Dear that you're father. healing, Father God. We know that you are a healer. Yes, you are. And Father, we 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 pray and we cover them with your blood. Jesus. Yes. Yes. We thank you, God. That you are the God that healeth thee. Yes, you are. You are our great physician. Yes, you are. And we thank you for that. Thank you, you, Lord God. Yes. And so, God, we know that you can do all things as Bishop Saber failed. Yes. You are never failing, God, and you're not a lying. Thank God, you, Lord. Either. Thank you, Lord. And so, God, we just thank you for your word. Thank you, God. That delivers us. Yes. That shines light in the in dark places, dear yes, God. Lord. Yes, because where there is darkness, there's the absence of you, Father. Yes, because where you are, you bring light. Yes, you Your do. Your son eliminates yes. everything when he comes into a situation. Yes, Lord. So, Father, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise and we give you glory. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Cheryl. And listen, for those of you who are watching us on tonight. If you cannot honestly say, Bishop Hines, I know that I'm saved. I know if I die tonight, I know if I die tomorrow, I know I'm going to heaven to be with the Lord. If you can't say that with confidence and assurance, then I want to give you an opportunity to be saved and to know that you're saved. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 6 and 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Romans chapter 10, verses nine and 10 say that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart, one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. 
In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and verse 9, say, For by grace are you saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God and not by works, lest any man should boast. We're not saved because we're good people or because we get it right all the time, but we're saved because God loved us, sent Jesus to die for the sins of the world, and on the third day, he raised him from the dead, and he has seated him at his own right hand. That's what we're going to be celebrating on Sunday. And if you're not saved and you want to be saved, if you're uncertain of your salvation and you want to be assured, then I want you to repeat this prayer after me and just mean it <clears throat> with all of your heart and God will save you from your sins. Just repeat after me, dear God in heaven, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I repent of my sins and I turn away from them and I turn my life to you. I believe that Jesus is your son, that he died for all of my sins and you raised him from the dead. Lord Jesus, I ask that you would come into my life and save me, guide me, lead me and teach me to live this same life. Right now, I receive you by faith as my savior and my Lord. And I thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I give my life to you. Now fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me the overflowing measures. Give me the ability to speak in other tongues and the power to bear witness of you. By faith, I receive the Holy Ghost. By faith, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. By faith, I have the tongues and I have the power. Thank you for filling me tonight. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. <clears throat> now, if you said that prayer and you meant it with all of your heart, I want you to know God saved you from your sins. He filled you with his spirit and he's given you a brand new life in him, his very own life, eternal life. Here's the next thing you should do. If you're not already a member of a good Bible teaching church, I encourage you. Find a good Bible teaching church, unite with that church, become a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, and then out of your obedience to him, be baptized. And now if you live in 770-34-770-75-77089 or 775-81 zip codes, you're close to New Covenant. You ought to come on over and be a part of New Covenant Christian Church. We're a great Bible teaching church. And we would love to have you as a member of our church family. Amen? Amen. All right. Glory to God. Now, listen, you can go to our website, NCCCHouston.com. That's NCCC. That stands for New Covenant Christian Church, Houston.com. And just go to where it says Giveify. And uh, once you go on Giveify, then you can uh, uh, give your offering, your tithe and your offering on tonight. Remember, if you're already a member of another church, give your tithe and your offering to the church that you are a member of. And if, But if you want to sow a seed into New Covenant, you're welcome to do so. New Covenant members, uh, please give your tithe and your offering to New Covenant Christian Church. Amen? All right. Well, Pastor Cheryl, I'm about finished for the night. Do you have anything else you want to share with the people? It's Resurrection Sunday. Resurrection Sunday. Sunday. Come Resurrection Sunday. Yes. Amen. We're going to have a wonderful time. Yes, we are. I'm looking for forward to it. those of you who've just been watching, yeah. come to church Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah come to and church. And call somebody and invite and, them. Yes, absolutely. You know what? All New Covenant members should do that. Call and invite somebody to come and worship with us on Sunday morning because we're going to have a wonderful time. Those of you who are, are watching and you're not a member of our church, we start at 9 a.m. And um, so make sure you get there, you know, at 9 a.m. We do uh, our Sunday school at 8 a.m. And we roll right from Sunday school into our morning worship. We start on time. And uh, so I encourage y'all to come on the we, church. We don't do CP time. No, yeah. we start on time. We start CP. on time. Amen. CP. And we don't hold you all day. Yeah. We don't hold you all day. We owe you as long as the Lord wants us to. Yeah. And then we let you go. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes the anointing break out and, you yep. know, it's just so good. God yes, just has his way. Yeah. You, won't, you won't be mad. <laughs> Not at all. 
All right. God bless you all. We love you all. Look forward to seeing you all on this weekend. And uh, may the Lord be with you. May he, may his hand shine upon you, his face shine upon you, and may he keep you in all of your ways. Be blessed in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good night, everybody. Good night.